Welcome back to the channel. Here's a quick video on how to replace the top seal oil seal on a Briggs & Stratton lawnmower. Here's the replacement one that I'll be using for my lawnmower. And the tools that you'll need for this job are pretty standard, uh, pretty basic. Ratchet, some extensions, 10 8mm sockets, 15 16 socket, um, some screwdrivers depending on if you have any other screws or bolts that need to be taken out. Um, some sort of implement, whether it's a pick or a drywall screw and a drill to get the old seal out, a hammer to kind of help you both get off the flywheel as well as drive the new seal in, and potentially something round or however way you want to get that new seal in, something round is definitely helpful. Um, a torque wrench if you want to be snazzy and make sure that you're torquing that bolt, that flywheel nut um, properly and then a 2x4 to hold the blade in place as you're trying to uh, tighten and loosen the flywheel. Breaker bar might be really nice in case that flywheel nut is really stuck on there and um, a clamp might be helpful in case you want something to hold the flywheel brake in place and hose clamp pliers to get off any um, hoses or any lines like that like the gas line in case that's in the way other than that i mean this is pretty straightforward you can get a flywheel puller and other snazzy tools but for the most part i'm going to show you how to do it for the most part with the tools that i have here pretty basic nonetheless let's get started first thing we'll want to do is come over to the spark plug pull the boot off the plug so it doesn't have any way to start and then you can come over to the cover right here just pop this off you can pull up like that, and then we'll come up over to the cord here, pull it down, and fish it through that little opening. I need to pull it a little bit more. And just like that, let it go in. Now what we're going to do is take off the three bolts, one, two, three, that hold this uh, cover on. There are the three bolts I'd recommend before we remove this gas tank and cover to empty the gas and then we'll get the, the bolt that holds, the last bolt that's under here that holds the tank in place. Okay, now under the gas can, if we go underneath here, you'll see right there is a 10 millimeter bolt that holds the tank in place. So, There's the bolt, see that there? And there's also a spacer, at least in my mower there is. So just know that if you see that on the deck of your mower, that is a spacer. And now with that, we can move this gas tank up and down and over, get that out of the way. And let me just show you again over here. So as you can see, that's where we pulled that bolt out of there. So the spacer goes here, over it, over that hole, and then there's another hole on that gas tank, and then the bolt goes through. All right, so now we can take off this other cover. Actually, before we get this cover off, let's get off this oil, um, where the oil goes. So eight millimeter. do here is pull up, twist, and then pull away. There's the oil tube and dipstick. Now I keep the bolt with it so you don't lose. Now I give it that cover off. There's two 10 millimeter bolts, one right here, 
Come right here. This one is. And the other one. Now we can remove this cover. Oh, actually, I apologize. There's two more bolts back here that we need to get. All right, 10 millimeter bolt. And then one on the other side. Now, we can finally remove this cover. So all we have to do is just wiggle it a little bit. And just like that, we can access the flywheel nut, cup, and the actual flywheel. So now we need to get this flywheel nut off so we can take off this bowl and access the flywheel. So what we we'll wanna do, unless you have an impact gun, uh, a way to get this off, you're gonna need a lot of leverage. So what I do is I stick a two by four down here before the blade because as you spin this the blades gonna spin so you need something to catch the blade so you can loosen that nut up there so what I do this is definitely Jerry rigging a little bit but I hold the board like that so it's a little bit crooked so it catches the blade and then with your 15 16 socket you're gonna need to break off that nut and I would I would definitely recommend a breaker bar because this will be on there tight. Again, pushing that piece of wood up so it doesn't move, and then there we go. Just like that. Leverage is key. Now I can get off this flywheel nut. Take off this bowl. Now we need to pull off this flywheel, which is uh, a process in and of itself. If you have a puller, all you have to do is thread it in the ends here and then it'll pop up. But if you're like me and don't have a puller, then we're gonna do this a different way. So I'll show you that next. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna spin the flywheel nut back on because basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the, uh, we're gonna hit here lightly and then tap from the bottom of the flywheel at its thickest part, spin it around, tapping both sides and then tapping the middle again, over and over and over again until it eventually comes off. It's a process, it's not the, probably the best way to do it, but it is a potential way. And if you do have other suggestions and you've done this before, please definitely share your ideas in the comment section below. Again, we're here to help each other, save some money, but this is the way I do it, so I'll show you how to do it my way. I ended up needing to just take off that uh, gas tank. So all you have to do, there's a little hose clamp here, loosen it, and uh, you should be able to just move that gas tank. Uh, it was in the way. So anyway, learn from my mistakes. Let's get back to getting this flywheel off.
All right, there's the flywheel. There's the key that slides into the flywheel. And you might have seen, saw me um, have to move my hand up here. What I did is I just pulled the blade brake, and as you can see, that's the flywheel brake right there that you need to pull so you can get the flywheel completely off. Here is a closer look at my nice oil leak. Look at all that. All right, so I'm gonna clean this up and then we're gonna remove the seal. All right, to get out the seal, what I'm gonna use is a pick and a hammer and I'm gonna puncture the center of the seal until I can start just pulling it out. I wanna be careful not to mar either side because that will cause a leak, so just be careful when you're uh, trying to penetrate through here. There we go. There's the seal. So now I just gotta get a new one and finish this job up. All right, cleaned up the top a little bit. Now with our new seal here, we're just gonna put some oil around the rim of it so that we can lubricate it and help it seat in here more easily. And yeah, so I'm gonna put some oil around the tip of it. Show you a picture here in a minute. Might not be able to see that, but Quite coated with oil here. Now with that seal up there, I'm gonna set it down as far as I can by hand. And then now we just wanna have it seat like it was before. If you remember um, when we took out the old one, it was just flush with this uh, with the crankcase up here. So all we're gonna do now is, um, this. I'm gonna use this socket just to kind of set it, seat it in the rest of the way. You can use whatever works for you. So I'm gonna do that. So I was stupid and realized that hitting one side was not going to help. So I found two different objects that I'm going to try and use. Um, my socket wasn't big enough to fit around the entire uh, shaft there. So if you have a socket big enough, great. If not, we're going to have to learn to improvise. So I'm going to try with this now.
got it. Took a lot of jerry rigging there, but I think we are good. Yep, feels nice and smooth. Feels flush all around the seal. I want to make sure that it is completely in even around. No slight um, protrusions or anything like that. So I think we are good now. Now we can start reassembly. All right, now we want to put the flywheel back on and we want to make sure that the notch here where the flywheel key goes corresponds with the hole that's in the, um, or the slot that's in the shaft. So let's line those up. And then you'll have to release the brake so you can get the flywheel down. All right, looking good. Here's another view. So we have the flywheel on the crankshaft here. And now we can just put the flywheel key in. And all we're gonna wanna do is tap that in place. I'll probably just use a screwdriver and tap that all the way down. Just thought I'd share this quick hack with you. Um, put a clamp or something on the brake so you don't have to deal with that when you're trying to put the uh, flywheel key back on. But anyway, getting back to this. So we have our flywheel key. Want to insert it like that. And then we'll just tap that down into place using this screwdriver. Okay, here we go. Good. Now we can put this flywheel cup back on. And then the nut. If you haven't seen my cross threading or how to prevent cross threading video, I'll definitely put that in the card above. Definitely check that video out in case you're ever worried about cross threading. But now that we have that flywheel nut on there, I'm going to tighten that. And then um, uh, I think torque specs is about 55, 50 to 60 foot pounds. So I'm going to tighten that uh, with a torque wrench. You obviously have free will, so you don't have to tighten it with a torque wrench, but obviously it is supposed to be tight. Um, I'll share a link in the description box below in case you want to check what the specific torque specs are for your flywheel nut. Uh, other than that, I'm going to keep going. There you go. 55 foot pounds. Oh my God. Okay. All right, flywheel cup and flywheel nut back on. You can put on this cover, just slides over. And then I'll start with the two bolts down here in the front. Just thread those in by hand. Now, let me move you over here. You can see which ones I'm going to work on now. I'm going to do these two back here. One here. And then the other back here.
Now we can get the gas tank over here. Actually, whoops, forgot one thing. Need to put in the oil dipstick and tube. So we'll get that in here. Show you that as well. So here we'll just let's see. Slide this down. Then it'll just rotate in. It should click nicely in place like that. Now we can tighten that bolt that holds the oil level re indicator. the gas tank on first. Pull this through. Get it seated. And then we'll put that spacer and nut or bolt that goes into the side of the gas can down here. And then we can put on the bolts on the top. So I'll do that. in there. This should just rotate back and forth. Good. Now we can put those three eight millimeter bolts in the top. Now we can put this gas line back onto the tank. So I'm gonna see if I can do this one handed. Just move that hose clamp down, put that tube over like that, push it forward, and then push that, pull that hose clamp up, lock that in place. Now we can put on the shield, or the chute I guess. So just line it up with the grooves here. I guess let me get screws started. a little loose so that we can adjust when we put the other screw in. It's too tight you won't be able to get the other screw in potentially. Tighten just like that. Now if I move you up a little bit. Now we can put on this cover. It just clicks into place. Obviously, you want to make sure the little notch here is where the line goes, sticks out. So we'll just kind of fold this in a little bit. Let's see. There we go. And now we just need to pull this line up and put it back in place. 
All right, now to get that rip cord up here, we need to pull the brake lever again. Pull that here. With your other hand, just pull this up and then feed it through. Actually, I'm gonna show you it. This. Now we can put on the spark plug boot and fill it up with gas, prime it, start it, check for leaks, and this job is complete. So thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section below, or if you have any handy tips that maybe I didn't share or that you've tried or were helpful for you, please feel free to share them below. Like and subscribe if this video was helpful. Um, and yeah, definitely check out my other videos. I have other lawn mower repair videos as I've had many problems with my lawn mower lately. Um, I try and help people save money, learn, and gain some experience. And yeah, again, if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. Help other people out with your experiences. And like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.